Det ni ser är huvudgatan i en amerikansk stad som förmodligen inte finns. Det tar i alla händelser högst åtta sekunder att dra Storgatan ner på motorcykel. Om man räknar in backen från Ralfs besseriaffär. Mannen som rider genom stan är en av dess viktigaste personer. Och han är på väg till jobbet. Välkomna till magasinet som ikväll sänds från USA. Eller snarare från ett USA som kanske inte finns. Annat än i miljoner amerikaners drömmar. Vi ska försöka finna den by, den lilla stad som i flera år nu fängslat, fascinerat och roat Amerika. En liten stad som tiden har gått förbi. Lake Wobegon heter staden. Den ligger i Minnesota och den är vara befolkad av en färgstark blandning norska och tyska immigranter. Berättelserna från och om Lake Wobegon har under rekordlång tid nu toppat de amerikanska bestsäljarlisterna. Lake Wobegon Days, dagar i Lake Wobegon som boken heter, är skriven av Garrison Keillor. Av många ansedd vara USAs just nu främste och mest intelligente humorist. En värdig arvtagare till Mark Twain. Ni vet han med Tom Sawyer och Huckleberry Finn. Och likt Mark Twain så uppreder också Garrison Keillor på scen. I något så oamerikanskt som ett radioprogram, till lika ett icke-kommersiellt radioprogram. Det programmet är nu en över tio år i succé över hela USA. Och det är helt tack vare en man vid namn Garrison Keillor och en liten stad vid namn Lake Wobegon, Minnesota. Magasinet ska ikväll ta er med till staden som är Amerikas hjärta. Men kanske Lake Wobegon finns. I varje fall finns den lilla stad där Garrison Killer har bott och hämtat stoff. Det tar åtta sekunder att passera Storgatan på motorcykel, inklusive backen upp från Ralfs besseriaffär. Och här ridandes på motorcykeln i sina ödleskinnstövlar är en av stans och därmed en av berättelsernas huvudpersoner på väg till jobbet. Och nu avslöjas en av Lake Wobegons hittills mest bevarade hemligheter, dess riktiga ursprung. Det här är svensk byggd. There were times when I recognized a very thinly veiled reference to myself. Uh, I was once called, I'm sure it was me, I was called uh, uh, Father Tom, Father Tom, the, the young curate at Our Lady of Perpetual Responsibility, and then he told a story about me. And uh, one of the things that we do in town here each year is we have a St. Francis Festival, where all the uh, boys and girls and some of the parents also will bring their cats and dogs and horses and gerbils and snakes and just about every imaginable animal. And we have a big parade through the main street of town. And uh, I, as the, uh, I guess the only uh, minister in town, am selected to lead the parade. So I ride a horse and I wear a, a Franciscan robe with a hood And uh, then I get off and bless the animals. And several years, Garrison has referred to St. Francis Day at uh, uh, Lake Wobegon. Um, Scandinavians all came over here to a country they recognized. Some of them slipped down south to Texas and places that I don't know what happened to them. But uh, most people came up here to northern country. And, and so my morality, I suppose, is a northern uh, morality. It's, uh, it has to do with being careful, being aware of uh, that the world is not uh, utterly friendly and, uh, and innocent. Paradise is well south of here. We're not in the paradise belt up here. 
Men i Marine finns många fler än Randy Carlson och Pastor Nyman som upptäcker sig själva i Garrison Keillers berättelse. I think uh, when he's talking about Lake Wobegon and the stories and, and the characters he's talking about, I think people kind of fit themselves into that. They kind of dream along. I know I do when I'm listening to him sometimes. Lose it for a while. Dream, that's right. Ralph Malmberg ägde speceriaffären i Marine. Det är samma Ralph och det är samma speceriaffär kring vilka så många av historierna från Lake Wabigon kretsar. Affären med de något äldre men alltid rätt så bra matvarorna. Eller helt enkelt Ralphs Pretty Good Grocery Store. I had all my compressors in the basement. And it got very hot there in the summertime. So I installed a big circulating exhaust fan. And I hung it on the um, rafters near the produce counter. And when I ran that fan, it vibrated the floor quite a bit. Garrison walked in, and he was pacing back and forth and standing in front of that produce counter. And I, d I didn't really think about what it was. And the next day, he uh, remarked about uh, on the air about uh, the new foot vibrator that Ralph had installed and that uh, people should come there after working hard and get their feet massaged. Has any one of you heard or, or uh, read about Lake Wabagon? Yeah. Yeah. My mom has the book. <laughs> it's not really uh, very big. It's, I don't know, it's, I think it's smaller than Marine. I think Lake Wabagon, there's not too many things happen. And it's in Marine, there's more things that happen. There aren't really like a movie theater in Marine. So we have to we always have to drive into Stillwater for everything. Yeah. Like for groceries. There's a grocery store, isn't there? Yeah, but it's yeah. small. Yeah. There's more of a selection in Stillwater. Would you rather go shopping in Stillwater and go to the grocery store here? Yeah. Yeah. And I get my hair cut in Stillwater. But there's a barber here too. Yeah. Too expensive. Yeah. Yeah. What a cost cutters. Yeah. Låt oss spara fortsättningen och återuppta vår jakt på Lake Wabegons hemlighet. Bibliotekarien i Marine har bästa utsikten mot huvudgatan. I think the word uh, Wabegon has a connotation of sad and lost and gone forever. I think probably the immediate appeal of Garrison's book has that to it. I think that people here living in this village, um, one of the oldest villages in Minnesota, have the feeling of an image of coming back to something that's lost and perhaps they'll find it. Um, in our world, we destroy the environment, we destroy uh, social institutions, the church changes, the family changes. Uh, all of this pressures people into, I think, looking in a sad way. Um, I mean, they're not looking for bits of nostalgia that they can buy or put in their house or anything like that. I think they're looking for what they already know is gone. Would you say that Garrison Keillor, in a way, is a social critic? No, no. He's a poet. I don't think there's any drive to change anybody. I think he's commenting, as poets do, about a certain reality or a certain world and leaves it to us. Garrison has a very pronounced morality to what he does. I think he shows us the best of ourselves and also our imperfections, uh, but it's all done in a very gentle way. Uh, I think that's part of the secret. 
people uh, who have had an, any kind of dealing with a small town in America can identify with what he's talking about. Well, he ta tells stories about uh, people who do something a little bit different, and people look at them and uh, maybe smile, but they still accept them. And that's part of the morality, I think, the acceptance. There's a, a deep acceptance that is part of Lake Wobegon. And it's all a little sense. I just hope to uh, go on and keep this little town in mind and try and uh, talk about these people. It's been a wonderful subject for me. It really has helped me. Over the years, these stories have changed so much. They really have turned around from, from being a kind of a clumsy satire of small town uh, Christian people whom I uh, came from to being uh, uh, some kind of declaration of love and admiration for people who are not all that easy to admire on first glance. Det har varit en lång vecka i Lake Wobegon. Ja, förutom att Sveriges Television var här. Sveriges Television. Det kanske till och med slår ut skolkommitténs veckomöte som första sidens nyhet i Lake Wobegon Messenger som kommer ut varje vecka. Kanske Garrison Keeler kommer att berätta om det här någon gång på sitt vis med detaljer som vi andra vanliga människor inte lagt märke till. Magasinet från Lake Wobegon USA är slut. Lake Wobegon, staden där kvinnorna är starka, männen är snygga och barnen är strax över genomsnittet. Tack för oss.